Now, the next movie Uncle Larry saw that evening was a movie called Boogie Nights, which was written and directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. It's his first feature film. Uh, it's about the adult film industry in the late 70s and the early 80s. And the critics were just coming all over this flick, boys and girls. Uncle Larry didn't see a single review where the critic didn't say it was the best film they'd seen in the last five years. But you know, it was really a meaningless hodgepodge of mishmash and nothingness, boys and girls. It was full of a bunch of unsympathetic characters that you couldn't get involved in. And Paul Thomas Anderson has the, the writer-director problem that is so prevalent these days. These guys, um, oh, Quentin Tarantino, for instance, were obviously such geekoids when they were younger that they were social outcasts. And they had to learn everything they learned about human nature from watching films and videos. So you sit there, never seeing a single honest emotion, but a bunch of scenes from movies that you've already seen. And Uncle Larry thinks that's why the critics liked it so much. I mean, let's face it, most movie critics probably spent their arrested adolescence hiding out in a darkened theater. So they like to sit there and go, oh, that's from Ed Wood. Oh, that's from Raging Bull. And, you know, it makes them feel smart, and that's why they praise it so highly. But, there's, like Uncle Larry said, there's not an honest emotion in the whole flick. It just goes on and on, and when it's finally over, you're just relieved. You know, it's like if you, you make love way past the point where you're going to come, and it starts to hurt. That's what Boogie Nights is like. Now, Uncle Larry would like to recommend a great flick, a truly great flick, about the adult film industry, a movie called Raw Talent. Uh, it actually is an X-rated movie, and it was uh, directed by Larry Ravine and stars Jerry Butler. Uh, it was made in 1984, which is right in the time period that Boogie Nights is supposed to be portraying, but it is the best movie about the adult film industry Uncle Larry has ever seen, as well as being uh, maybe the best X-rated film he's ever seen. Um, the sex isn't too erotic, but uh, for once you're not watching it for the fucking. It's actually the film itself that really kicks ass. And it's also hilarious. You've never seen a funnier X-rated movie. Uncle Larry says, forget about Devil's Advocate. Forget about Boogie Nights. Just go right now if you know a, a video place that's open, like till midnight. Call them up. Say, do you have raw talent? Go and get it right now. Boys and girls, you won't regret it. And that concludes Uncle Larry's Movie Review Corner. But first, let's have one of Uncle Larry's patented movie reviews. Last night, Uncle Larry went to the airport cinemas and saw L.A. Confidential for $2.50, and he will now give you his considered opinion on this fine Hollywood movie. So here it is, boys and girls. Uncle Larry's movie review for this week L.A. Confidential. Eh. And that concludes our movie review for this week. And now it's time for Uncle Larry's only appearance here in the clubhouse in Uncle Larry's combined Hong Kong Cinema editorial corner. What do you want? What do we want? That was Jackie Chan in the opening scenes of Rumble in Hong Kong, the subject of this week's combined Hong Kong cinema and editorial corners. Now, this was brought to Uncle Larry's attention by some fans of his who had been watching his Hong Kong uh, movie corners and, you know, wanted to get some Jackie Chan videos, and this is what they picked up. But, boys and girls, you really have to watch out. Uh, now that Jackie Chan is finally broken here in the States, there is a flood of his early work on the market. But what the boys and girls have to realize is that Jackie Chan's early work really stunk. I mean, it was putrid. Uncle Larry knows that Hong Kong cinema is all about exploitation, you know, it's a, it's a part and parcel of the deal, but exploitation this blatant, Uncle Larry has to say something about it. Um, for starters here, take a look at this box here, boys and girls. This is the box for 
the video. And as you can see, Jackie Chan's name is prominently displayed right at the top here. Jackie Chan, uh, it's a big, huge picture of him in a fighting pose. It says, the star of Crime Story and Drunken Master strikes back. Can you see that, boys and girls? And then here on the back, there's a bunch of pictures of Jackie in various action poses. Here it says, Before the Bronx. Now, what the boys and girls have to realize is that not a single one of these pictures of Jackie Chan are actually from the movie. Uh, none of this stuff has anything to do with the movie that you're about to see. In fact, Jackie Chan appears in about less than seven and a half minutes in uh, this movie. It says 90 minutes running time, but it's really only about 70 minutes, and Jackie appears in less than 10% of it. Um, it's an extremely bad, low-budget flick, and uh, it's such a minor part that his character doesn't even have a name, boys and girls. Throughout the movie, he is referred to as the guy with the big mole on his face. Uncle Larry is not making this up. And uh, what's even worse, well, here, let's take a look at a scene uh, at his big climactic fight scene in the movie. Here you will see him practicing uh, the ancient techniques of Toyo... pretty much it for Jackie. Uh, the boys and girls who are aficionados of uh, martial arts movies know that Toyota is the ancient Japanese art of running your opponent over with your automobile, uh, an art that Jackie Chan fails at miserably in this flick. So boys and girls have to beware, and if that's not bad enough, um, Uncle Larry, take a look at this here, boys and girls. This is the actual video now, now, can you see that little window there, boys and girls? You see the tiny, tiny amount of videotape that is in there? That is because this movie is recorded SLP, the absolute slowest speed to allow them to cram uh, as much of this cheesy movie onto as uh, a small an amount of tape as they possibly can. Uh, this, this truly epitomizes the meaning of the word rip off, boys and girls. Uh, it's from uh, Eastern Heroes Video. You really have got to watch out for crap like this that is flooding the market. And the only way to really be safe, number one, if you think it's a great bargain, okay, it probably is. You're probably getting ripped off. This is what you need, boys and girls, right here. Sex and Zen and a bullet in the head. This is probably the definitive guide to Hong Kong video for the beginner. Uh, you can get it at Barnes & Nobles or any other major bookstore for 12 it is the perfect introduction to Hong Kong cinema. Um, they've since published the so-called Encyclopedia of Hong Kong Cinema, which lists like every freaking Hong Kong movie ever made, but it's not necessary. And what really makes this book superior, as Uncle Larry has pointed out before, is in the back here, they have a list of all of the movies in with the titles in Chinese. So you can walk into Asia Mart with this book and just point to the movie you want. They don't speak too good English there, but uh, they'll be able to look it up uh, from the Chinese characters and get you the title. Sex and Zen. And once again, boys and girls, look out for the slew of inferior movies featuring bit parts of Jackie Chan that are appearing on the market. And that concludes this week's combined Hong Kong Cinema Editorial Corner. So there you have it, boys and girls. Remember... Jackie Chan did a lot more movies that stank than he did movies that were truly great. Pick up that book and let the buyer beware.